We're Paul and Tan and we hope that you've been enjoying our series so far. We made it across the Outback Way through the centre of Oz and now our next adventure is to head through Outback Queensland towards Cape York with some cool stops along the way. This footage that you first see is from our first night at Winton at a free camp called Long Waterhole. Enjoy the video! Good morning. We are still at Long Waterhole. We're just packing up. We're going to go into Winton today and explore, catch up with a couple of friends. Um, one of Paul's ex-work colleagues. Um, that bird there is a brolga, we think. We actually hit one of those yesterday in the car, traveling down, traveling up to Winton. Came out from a waterhole straight in front of us. Anyway, uh, thoughts on Long Waterhole. It's really nice. It was really peaceful last night. It's going to be really hot today. So we're going to go into town, um, explore Winton. There's birds everywhere and there's a paddock full of cows over there that keep coming over to get a drink. There's birds everywhere. Nice little spot, free camp, and I imagine in at the right time of the year this place would be packed with people. It's a council-run, man-made waterhole um, to provide some water activities for the local people, I think, over the summer months. But the waters are not overly enticing. <laughs> But nevertheless, it was a really nice camp spot. And we're just packing up to go. I haven't seen these since Bali. Arno Grojahan was a German immigrant who dug up some valuable opal in the 1960s. He was able to afford and build a home in Winton and spent the rest of his life constructing a 70 metre wall which was two metres high. Materials were brought in from his opal mine and is studded with all sorts of machinery from all businesses around the Winton area. He even has a couple of motorbikes and a kitchen sink. Geez, a couple of motorbikes. <laughs> you got a cement, is that a cement mixer? <laughs> yeah. Toilet. Toilet. Cash register. <laughs> Because the old thing is sewing machine. We're camped up tonight um, opposite the hotel. It's part of their uh, van park. Um, probably go here for dinner tonight, maybe. It's a pretty quirky little place, a typical outback pub. Had a nice, just relax. Did a bit of editing and now we're going to the fruit shop. We found a little hidden fruit shop. Shop windows are full of history. You gotta slow down, look around. 
today and not tomorrow Where you're going You can rest your head Where you're going So this is a heritage site that used to belong to a Chinese gardener, market gardener called Willie Ma. Can't go inside, he did all of his gardening around in this area. Um, oh, it looks like it's all fenced off now. But this is his cars. How great that they've actually kept it all as a heritage thing. Imagine living and working from that building. I guess it's deteriorated over time, but far out. It's pretty warm out here, and I'm guessing that's probably not insulated. Let's have a walk around the garden beds. This was his garden bed. Provided fruit and vegetables for the entire town. Oh wow. So this was the actual shop? Shop, sure, yeah. It's got fake fruit and veg in it. Bananas are in pretty good shape. They are. And for... the pears are looking good. Yeah. So I don't know how long it is since this place actually... I think it said 70 years they were operational. Well... I don't know it closed. How fantastic that they've kept this though. So this is called, what's it called? Willie Ma's Chinese vegetable shop or something. Very, very interesting. It really does feel like we're in Outback Australia right now. Look how wide the streets are. And there's nobody around. Just us. <laughs> They're all sitting in their air conditioned caravans. Yeah, true. We're going back to the stinking hot troopy. Actually, we are partly under a tree, so that's not too bad. Just a little bit. Um, the thing that we've noticed out here is that we're kind of used to the sea breeze back home, and in the afternoons there is no sea breeze, and it tends to get hotter. So currently it's 3.11, and it's probably peaking now, the temperature. don't know what it is, but it's pretty damn warm. But that's okay. We're going to the pub for dinner, so that'll be exciting. I've got some meal cooked by someone else for a while. So yeah, we caught, I think we mentioned, we caught up with a couple of friends here who are also traveling, Dave and Alana. So yeah, we're going out to dinner with them tonight. Back to the park. Good morning. We are leaving Winton this morning. Um, we've had a really nice day yesterday with just catching up some friends, just relaxing a little bit and we've come to the conclusion that we need to have a down day more often. Um, thoughts on Winton? It's nice. Yeah, yeah. We, um, we really rated it. It was, um, I think I mentioned it got the, I don't know, tiny tourism town for the last two years but it's just got a nice vibe, hey? Yeah. Um, you know, the typical old country pubs and just the atmosphere, you felt safe. Um, Caravan Park was pretty much right opposite the pub, was actually attached to the pub. Um, but it was just really nice, clean facilities and just, you know, having a couple of days of just being able to walk around the town and explore it a little bit. It was just a really nice vibe, so really glad we did that. Um, today we're heading to, uh, out towards Porcupine Gorge, um, which is a national park. And we're staying at the Pyramid Campground tonight, which you have to book 
Queensland parks, most of them um, online before you get there. Um, we'll be passing through Hewenden, um, and I'm not sure what else. So yeah, looking forward to that. Not too much of a big drive, about 200 and something Ks to the campground, and hopefully we can get there after just after lunch, and there's a couple of gorge walks that maybe we can do there, which will be nice for the afternoon. Um, I know I always talk about the temperature, but <laughs> it's nine o'clock and it's already 30 degrees. It's gonna be another warm one, but that's okay. It's all part of the adventure, we don't mind. So yeah, this is what we're looking at at the moment. Pretty much that I think will be most of the journey, um, but we'll touch base with you shortly. So for such a dry place, they've got the greenest lawns I think I've ever seen. <laughs> it's like winter. The lawns, the lawns around the town were amazing. We found a free fossicking site on Wikicamps and we're having a bit of a fossick <laughs> to see if we can find anything. There's a few different things you can find here apparently. Shells or um, some uh, fossilised leaves and things like that. But you've basically got to fossick through all of this stuff. Paul's well, over there having a bit of a bit of a dig. We're not really kitted up for fossicking, like we haven't even got our boots on at the moment, so I don't know. I was just hoping we might find something. Or Paul might have... Have you found something? Oh, I found a dinosaur. You found a dinosaur? Oh, cool. <laughs> I mean, I think you've got to smash the rocks up to find things. It'd be like... Just diamonds. Yeah, oh, just yeah? stacks of diamonds. Oh. Yeah. Nothing. See how all this stuff running through here? Oh, so yeah. it's not fossils, it's more of that um what do they call it? I don't Bell, know. Bellorite. Bellorite or something. Hmm. You can see all bits glistening. Yeah. But you'd probably um I don't know. I think this one's worth about four million. <laughs> <laughs> so we can just keep travelling then? Yeah, for you, dear. Thanks, darling. Yeah. Right, so it would appear as though my diamonds can be mined to make fertiliser or cement. So, probably not... Gypsum crystal. Probably not what I first thought. Not gold. Well, I never said it was gold, but... It's a pretty cool little thing if you want to bring the kids out for a rake around though, isn't it? And this is actually, um, this place is actually, you wouldn't even know it was here if you didn't look on wiki camps. It's actually at the back of the race course. Um, not a soul in sight, so, oh, Paul's found more. Oh, diamonds. Diamonds? Yeah. More gypsum. I think he's dreaming. Okay, onward and upward. That was fun though. There's a few random dinosaurs around town. Shire of Flinders, that's one big windmill. Oh, look at this dry river. They've seen water here for a while. We're at Pyramid Gorge 
look out. Um, it's a little car park just before you get to the campground. So we're going to have a quick look at over the lookout and then we're going to head off to the campground and there's a two and a half K gorge walk that you can do once you get to the campground. So we'll do that when we get set up and um, I can see the gorge from here. Pretty damn spectacular. We're heading off to the campground now, so we'll show you what it's like when we get there. the walk to the Pyramid Gorge lookout from the campground. The campground's really nice, hey? Yeah, um, I think there's 22 sites um, and they're all pretty level and all quite big. The one we're on is not huge but it's plenty big enough for us but yeah there's some... Um, sort of a certain area for tenting. Yeah, really. yep separate areas, yep and um, a couple of decent toilet blocks. Um, it's beautiful out here. So we just, this is supposed to be just a short walk. So we're just gonna go and see where this goes. And then there's a loop apparently. So we'll see how hard that is to access or whatever. But we're right on the edge of the gorge here. So we will show you when we get there. So here's a bit of a pano of the gorge. This is just the short track and I'm pretty sure that straight ahead is Pyramid Gorge. Goes as far as the eye can see. about halfway down the gorge and it's about 4.30 and I reckon there's still about half a kilometre to go and it's quite steep and it gets dark, starts to get dark at 5.30 and 
the sun's already going down behind the cliff behind us. So I feel like we've left it too late to actually do the gorge walk, which is a real shame. Um, but you know, that's just <laughs> that's the way it is. Um, what do you think, Han? It's too... Uh, yeah, probably. I mean, your knee slows us down a bit, so I think... Yeah, I'm a bit of a hindrance. We'll, um, we can bail. It's no big... I mean, the, uh, you know what I'm looking at the water down there, thinking, "Oh my God, that looks so nice." Yeah. But to be to be honest, I haven't got my bathers on. So, mm. um, yeah, I'm sure there'll be plenty more opportunities like this. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. All right, let's commence the upward. Just talk to me for the rest of the day. <laughs> oh my God, I feel so bad. Gorge Campground this morning. We're heading north east up towards Cobbled Gorge and Copperfield Gorge. Have a bit of a look around there today and then we're going to be heading towards the coast a little bit. Um, plans are to probably end up somewhere like Miller Miller tonight if we can get that far. If not we'll find somewhere maybe to free camp on the way. Um, we're out pretty early this morning. It is 7.30. We had a really quick and easy pack up this morning. I don't know what happened. It just all seemed to work. So yeah, we were awake really early, saw the sunrise and got packed up real quick. So we're on the road and it's probably a couple of hours drive until we um, get to our first point of interest. So we, as you can see, we just saw a whole bunch of uh, cattle on the road near the road this morning some calves and some pretty big cows hey yeah. cool. all right we'll um see the you what's that have you talked about the campground there oh yeah okay the campground was fantastic um it was a parks and wildlife depot that's what we call them in wa parks and wildlife campground which we booked online was seven dollars per person per night so cheap and peaceful there was a few campers in um, two really good uh, toilet blocks um, there was what was a tables tables and um, benches and tables at most of the campgrounds especially sent set up campgrounds camp areas for tents um, and some couple of really nice walks to do down to the gorges fire pits and everything. yeah fire pits as well um, and heaps of wildlife. We were sitting there last night. We thought, oh, we'll just watch a bit of Netflix outside of the tent. And we were just sitting there peacefully minding our own business. And some critters just came in and started what hanging, they, hanging around sense? our feet. Not sure. They looked a bit like, um, I don't know, quolls. Is it quolls that we call them in WA? I'll look into that and I'll find out what they actually were. But they were pretty friendly. Fairly sure they were uh, pretty keen to pick up any food scraps. But it just made us a bit wary, so we hightailed it inside. <laughs> um, being the wildlife, yeah, they outnumbered us. Yeah, they were actually surrounding us, but they were—they <laughs> weren't um, vicious or anything. But I guess they could have been. We're not sure. Well, God, we just saw a fox. Holy moly! We think it was a fox. All right, we'll keep you posted with what's going on on the road.
chased each other. Oh. There's one over there. Oh, you can't see. Huh? Oh, maybe we should go and sit inside. What do you think? We're at Pyramid Gorge. Pyramid? Okay. Take it. Morning. We're leaving a campground. This actually, I'll just check the bike off already. Thanks so much for watching our videos. We really appreciate your support. Next week we have a completely different landscape to share with you, so stay tuned. Cheers!